Welcome back everyone. So today I'm going to be taking a look at WeedMD. This is the first on the channel because WeedMD is considered a penny stock. So I'm going to briefly talk about what exactly a penny stock is and then we'll take a look at what exactly WeedMD is. So first up, what exactly is a penny stock? So penny stocks have a greater volatility to that of growth stocks and the company in question is referred to as a small company that is often trading for less than five dollars a share. Now in the past the definition of a penny stock was one that had a stock of under one dollar but the SEC changed the definition to include all shares under the five dollar mark. Now the difference when you buy into these penny stocks is that most stocks trade over the counter which is referred to as OTC but on few occasions you can find some of these penny stocks listed on the likes of the New York Stock Exchange. Now penny stocks are associated with small companies and they have a low market volume as a result and so it can be hard to form a transaction when you try to buy or sell just because there's a low number of buyers or a low number of sellers or any combination. Now what happens is, is that there's much higher spreads on the bid ask price due to this lack of liquidity and as a result it becomes highly speculative because the asking price is much higher to what the company is worth and this is the reason why people consider penny stocks to be a risky investment. Now on top of that an investor that focuses on penny stocks needs to filter out the 95% of the poorly performed companies and just focus on the top 5% and these top 5% of companies they need to have the potential at least to move from small cap to a large cap or in other words to move to a blue chip status and with any of these penny stocks it's often hard to find information and when there is information out there there's a lot of misinformation because it's very easy for a publisher to write positive news when it's not the case and so this all results in making it hard to get a clear picture on how the company is performing and again this adds to the risk associated with penny stocks. Now there's a lot more to cover when it comes to penny stocks for instance you can determine whether a penny stock is listed with the SEC or not if they're not then most of the time it's more high risk but you can still invest in these companies and they can perform well but I'm happy to cover this content in a separate video so comment below if you're interested to have more of an understanding on which is considered a good company and which is considered a poor performing company. Now for individuals out there you may have played with penny stocks you may have made a profit or you may have made a substantial loss. If you traded a few times you may have gotten lucky but equally you could have lost a lot of money on a poorly picked company so my recommendation is to take the time to research these companies and if you are a new investor out there there is no harm in sticking with dividend based companies and then moving on to growth based companies or mixing and matching given that it's a much safer investment zone to be investing in. I've had this YouTube channel for almost a couple of years now and this is the first time I've publicly spoken about penny stock based companies. Even for me with my dividend based portfolio I invest in at least a thousand pound per company and if you happen to pick the wrong penny any stock then you can lose a thousand pounds at any given moment. It's way less likely with the likes of dividend or growth based companies but the counter argument is that you have much higher growth potential. You can see 2x, 3x, 10x or even higher depending on how well the company does. So just always keep in mind high risk high reward and always do your research into these companies. There isn't a single YouTuber out there that knows exactly what they're talking about so just keep that in mind and really do your research. And so the company that that I'm picking today is WeedMD. You can find them on the Trading212 platform. Just type in Weed and then you'll see WeedMD. It's the only listed company at the moment. Their ticker symbol is WDDMF. And you can see with my performance at the moment, over a thousand pounds invested. The return has dropped at the moment. I'm down 25%. So I'm really not lying when I say that these markets are volatile. But we can see a current sell price of 0.25 cents. And my average price at the time of buying is 0.34. I actually continue to add into the this position. I'm actually very bullish on the company and I'm going to be explaining my thoughts in this video. So what exactly does WeedMD do? Now they are a Canadian based company. Their headquarters are in Ontario and they first started out by owning a lease in a greenhouse which allows them to finally control the cannabis product. Since then they've expanded to 158 acre greenhouse and they also have an outdoor cultivation facility. So unlike other companies out there, WeedMD first started out as a supplier. Some people may disagree here but I actually think if you're within the cannabis industry, the companies that are going to be best positioned are those that focus on the supply side. And so if you own the infrastructure and you're growing the produce, you're able to sell this to other companies that maybe focus more on the retailer side. But equally you have 
control of your own supply and you can build those retail connections as well. Now from 2021, there's been this listing of this cannabis 2.0 products. In the past, there was a focus on the health industry. So they had that one side of the market, but this cannabis 2.0, the debut is expected to be in quarter two of 2021. And so cannabis 2.0 is now focusing on the consumer side and all the retail partners. They're extending their portfolio on a range of products and this ranges from solventless concentrates to deliver what they state as a premium product. Now WeedMD is associated with that premium product feel because with their greenhouse they have complete control. They don't have any issues with whether the sun is shining within their indoor facility and with the precise control they can grow and reproduce this on a global scale. Equally, they have expanded to outdoor. And of course, you have all the concerns that I mentioned, whether there is all year round sunshine and whether there's too much rain, etc. But the benefit they do have is the the plants are able to grow three to five times more. And from there, they can cut them down and they continue to grow. And so the costs become even lower when they move to the outdoor facility. But they always have the backup of the greenhouse and they are focusing on different sectors anyway. Now, there was a big push in the cannabis industry. We had a max price point of recent times. This was back in early February of 0.72. We've had this rapid sell off and this is what has led me to focus on this company. And I've been adding to my position every month because for me, this company has so many positives going on that this price right now appears to be a discount. Now on April the 30th, we actually have a conference call. It's going to be talking about the performance up until the end of 2020. Just looking back at the information that is presented by Trading212, we only have until 2019. The losses here are actually very substantial with a revenue of 20 million, but a net income of negative 10 million. The performance wasn't great, but you have to remember the a lot of the costs were in expanding with all the acres that they have to grow this product. There's a lot of money just to buy the infrastructure and with all the additional running costs. But their balance sheet actually looks good. Their debt to assets is just 35%. That's considerably low. So should this company hit into any issues, they do have the ability to raise debt. Of course, that's not ideal, but they're in a position to do so. I'd be a lot more scared if I was to see a debt of around, say, 70%. There'll be other companies out there that, for instance, would have borrow an extra 10 million so that their net income is close to being positive but this is not what's happening with the company they are simply at their expansion stage now in addition to the purchasing you can see here that they also ramped up their retail engagements they've got a color brand and um, the adult use market they've expanded their distribution network with new partners that they have and as I mentioned earlier a substantial sale with their outdoor cultivated biomass and this is where they cut the buds and then sell to their international markets. That sector alone has a record revenue of over 12 million Canadian dollars. They also have their connection with their medical grade cannabis as well. So WeedMD is the parent company. They have a lot of these child companies underneath, one of which focuses purely on the medical industry. So already we can see some early figures of 2020. This is the first quarter here with a net revenue of over 12 million dollars there. As for their loss, you can see we have this, and I'm not too sure how to say this, but EBITDA. It stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So this gives a much clearer representation of any loss or gains that they have. That's currently at $5 million. Actually, in the comments below, let me know how you actually pronounce this word. And I probably said it completely wrong. But we can see they have over $40 million of cash on hand. Their inventory has increased by $2 million just within the space of three months. Now, the one thing I would say is the information on this company is a little bit hard to find. And we get information every three months or so. And generally there has to be some high profile information for it to be documented. And personally, I wanted exposure to the cannabis industry. It's regulated in Canada and of course legal there. And if we see the US markets open up, whether it's with the current president or with future presidents. But the benefit we have with the likes of WeedMD is that it's not solely reliant on whether other companies ban or allow the usage of cannabis. But across the different countries, for the most part, there will be an exception within the medical industry. So it was very important for me to find a company that really focused on that sector. But equally, it's great to see that this company is expanding. It has what's considered a vertical integration in that they are hitting across multiple sectors. Let's take a look at an alternative and it's ticker symbol HITIF, it's known as High Tide. This is a company that I've been looking at as well, but I haven't been comfortable investing. 
If we take a look at their quarterly report, so we've got a breakdown of the first quarter of 2021. I'm not actually sure what the reason is here, but off the bat we have over $11 million lost. And so this is very concerning and equally look at the debt to asset ratio of 85%. So for me, this is a company that I've stayed away from. Again, let me know in the comments below if you disagree with why you think Higher Tide is a sensible company. But a lot of these numbers, as I mentioned, I haven't looked into the reasons why there's been a drop. They have been profitable on certain quarters. So if anyone knows below, let me know why they have this profit to loss type of scenario going on. Now, for those new to the channel, it'll be great if you consider subscribing. If you're interested in more of this type of content, then hit the notification bell as well. Hitting a thumbs up on the video is always great as well. So always good to help out the YouTube algorithm. And I have new videos out every week. So let me know your thoughts on WeedMD and any opinions you have on any rival companies. It's a growing sector. We're going to have multiple companies that are going to be performing well well and there'll be others that probably won't be around in 10 years from now so thanks for watching everyone and with that said i'll catch you in the next one